This is a question on energetics. It runs from A to E and it's 10 marks in total. I'm going to recommend you pause on each section, try them, and then when you've done the whole question, review with the rest of the video. So here's A and B. C. D. And E. Okay, so if we start taking a look at the answers, to begin with, we're writing an equation including state symbols to show the reaction taking place in the standard enthalpy of combustion of ethanol. So you really do need to know the, the definitions to be able to do these questions properly. We know that when we combust, we are combusting with uh, a reaction with oxygen, and that's diatomic, we're adding O2. Now we also know in standard enthalpy of combustion, it's complete combustion, a ready supply of oxygen. So we're making CO2 and H2O. And I can balance out the carbons and the hydrogens as we have done here. Now, at this point, we do not have balanced oxygens. So we need to look at the fact that we've so far got three on the left, because one is present in the ethanol, and we've got seven on the right. So to balance it, we need 3O2. Now, so far, we're still within the rules of standard enthalpy of combustion because we have combusted one mole of the ethanol, but we're still not there. It did say it needs state symbols. So I can put these in, that's fairly straightforward. Ethanol is a liquid, oxygen and carbon dioxide are gases. Now, you are potentially going to be thinking that when you combust ethanol, we get water vapour. You are absolutely right. But the enthalpy of combustion will actually be the value once the water has condensed back to liquid, because it's when all reactants and products are in their standard states at standard temperature and pressure. So that tiny little state symbol there can often be the undoing and the loss of one mark on this question. Moving on to part B, and we want to know what the enthalpy change here is. Well, we're starting with carbon and oxygen. We're making carbon monoxide. Um, what enthalpy change have we got here? Well, this is the standard enthalpy of formation of carbon monoxide. The enthalpy change when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements in their standard states at standard temperature and pressure. But it wouldn't be easy to determine directly because it would not be possible to combust carbon and only make carbon monoxide. We're going to get carbon dioxide as well, and we wouldn't know the ratios and the proportions. Moving on to part C, and we have got here some information about enthalpy of combustion of carbon and carbon monoxide. And we want to know the enthalpy change for the equation in part B, which I've put down at the bottom of the screen. I'm now going to start to build a Hess cycle with that at the top, and that's my X value. Now, I've been given the enthalpy of combustion of carbon, which is negative 393, and that would give me carbon dioxide. I've also been given the enthalpy of combustion of carbon monoxide, which would also give carbon dioxide, so I can complete my cycle. Now at this point, I can identify my two roots. I'm going to show those as blue and green, and I'm going to substitute the colours in to an expression. So I can see where the numbers have come from. This then allows me to rearrange to make x the subject. And once I do that, I can get to an x value of negative 110. Moving on to part D, three mark question, and we've been given some data once again to build a cycle. Now, I'm going to start by putting in what we've got. I've got the enthalpy of formation of xenon tetrafluoride, and that's negative 252. I've also been told what the enthalpy change will be when we break an F2 down to 2F, and we end up with 4F, so we're doubling that 158. It comes to 316. My Xe going to Xe is zero by definition, because it's been made from its elements in their standard states at standard temperature and pressure. Now I want to know the bond enthalpy of an XEF bond. Breaking apart an XEF4 into an XE and 4Fs is breaking four of them. So I'm going to put my value here as 4X. 
I can now identify my two roots again using my blue root and my green root and highlighting. I'm going to show you how we put those numbers in and then I can rearrange to make 4x the subject. 4x comes to 568. I want to know the value for 1x e f bond so I'm going to divide that value by 4 and that takes me to 142 kilojoules per mole. And finally we want to know why the calculated value would differ from the mean x e f bond. Now there's a fairly standard answer to this question which comes up a lot. The x e f bond can occur in a range of compounds. The mean bond enthalpy takes into account all of those different compounds, whereas we've calculated specifically for x e f 4.